Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Dork Side of the Ring. I am your host and purveyor of all things that are dorky in wrestling. It is I. I am Grum. Grum is me. It's good to have you guys. Welcome back. This week, we've got a good, fun episode up ahead. Uh, before we get into the episode, I do have a couple things. I want to thank you again for coming back. Thank you for the support. Uh, for the first episode, thank you for listening to the second episode, and I'll, I'll thank you in advance for listening to the third episode uh, next week. But before that, uh, I did a couple things. I don't if if you don't follow me on the, the social medias, uh, which are at Dorkside Ring on Twitter and Instagram, you didn't see this. Uh, but uh, I figured out a way to get you guys to you know leave some five star reviews. You know, leave a review, leave a five star rating on a, on the podcast platform of your preference, be it Apple or Spotify or Google Podcasts or some, any of the other various ones you can find. Dork side of the ring. So the way I, I want you to you know a little, little incentive to do it is uh, you know I'll break out I'll break out I, I I'm pretty good with voices. You know I I do Grand Theft Auto role play. You know, I'm good with voices, but two voices in particular that pertain to wrestling, uh, I'm pretty good at. You know, I got a pretty good Dusty Rhodes, you know, and I got, you know, I think I got a pretty good Macho Man. I think my Dusty Rhodes is great, um, but Macho Man is very good as well. But in, in in hopes of enticing you, I would like for you to leave me a five-star review on Apple or any other podcast, just leave the reviews, leave the feedback. Let, that's how we grow this podcast is you telling people. And if you've told people about this, thank you. If you don't know me uh, from my other content, you know, or, or or from a Discord, and you're listening to this, awesome. Hi. Nice to meet you. Glad to have you. I hope uh, we become great friends. Uh, but a lot of you may know me, you know, from Twitch or whatnot that are listening to this. And, you know, they, you know the you know the voices. You know they're good. So you can basically write a review about the podcast – Throw in anything you want me to say, uh, and provided obviously it's appropriate, uh, you know. And by appropriate, you know, we're not just being, you know, ignorant pieces of shit. Uh, which, if you're listening to this, you're not an ignorant piece of shit by basis of you, you know, you listening to here. The only way you've known about it is directly from me. Uh, so far, so far. Again, hi, nice to meet y'all. Uh, so leave a, leave a review. I'll read it either as Dusty Rhodes or as Macho Man. I'll pick unless you want me to to read it. You know, you know, if you want me to read it in Dusty Rhodes voice, I'll read it in Dusty Rhodes voice for you. But in exchange, you have to leave that review. So leave a review, five star ratings. I appreciate that. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell any wrestling fan in your life, or somebody who just enjoys people having fun, because that's what this that's what this episode and really the podcast is. Um, it's just. Friends having fun talking about wrestling. Uh, this week we've got JTR and Crawford from the Tyler I Am Discord joining me, my close personal friends. Uh, when we're we talk about Sting being attacked by dogs, if you don't know what that is, we'll talk about it. Uh, I'll give you a little heads up about it. It's fun. It's outrageous, and it spawns. It, it was that, normally the conversations that follow are spawned because of the video. This is an in, this is the inverse. Uh, there was a conversation we were having in the Tyler's Discord about Sting being like Paul Pierce and decided, you know, that it would make a good conversation on the dork side. I just have to find an excuse to talk about it. And I did. I found it. It's Great American Bash 1999. A false count anywhere. It's a match between Sting and Rick Steiner for the television title. It's a lot of fun. And we're going to get into that. But, but again, before we do that, right right before we're going to get I, I promise. I need you right now to go on Twitter. If you got a Twitter, your Instagram at @dorksidering all all together. Three words. Go hit that follow button. And then hit that little retweet the retweet or share to your story. You can share the story on Instagram, on Twitter, retweet uh, the tweet that says that this episode is live. I appreciate that. Let people know about the dork side of the ring and i and we'll grow together thank you we, we appreciate that here at the dork side by we i mean myself uh, my guests uh, my two different computers uh that it takes to do this three eh, two uh <laughs> but yeah thank you so much i appreciate it we will uh we'll continue to do more more of these fun episodes like this one with jtr and crawford from the tyler i am discord my close personal friends jtr and crawford We'll get in that conversation 
talking about Rick Steiner, Sting, Great America Bash 1999, where Sting is attacked by dogs. And the ensuing conversation is a really good one. A lot of fun. Without further ado, the conversation. Take it away, me. Welcome back to the Dork Side. It is me, Grum. I am here now with my guests to discuss Great American Bash 1999, a particular uh, match in uh, particular, a particular match in particular. Hello, with me today are two of my close personal friends, JTR. How's it going, pal? Hello. And Crawford. All right. Uh, uh, we're going to be talking about, um, and I kept this a secret from you guys, but you can see it now on your screen, uh, on the on the stream uh, screen sharing. Um, we're going to be watching <laughs> Rick Steiner and Sting going on, going against each other, um, in a false count anywhere match from great American bash 1999, mainly because there's a, we made, this is an excuse, uh, match. Uh, that's what I called. I literally found this one out because, you know, I do, I was like, Oh, do we do a RoboCop one and RoboCop's great. But like, I feel like the three of us vaguely know, I, I mean, I know all about it, but the, the three of us vaguely know about it and we can get our jokes yeah. off but the i like i like the idea of like we're gonna watch this match this is a false count anywhere match and this match in particular has a finish that is dork side worthy now some people okay. might be listening to this going i know which match this is jesus christ uh so yeah, i don't think i've ever seen this match yeah this is this is the this is the end bischoff is like Right, close to being out the door, getting fired. This is about a couple, like three, two, two months. I think he gets fired in like September or let go in September, and uh, this is like July. So he's just, you know, he's just vibing. They're vibing. Things are kind of falling off. Uh, you know, WWE is taking off. Um, and is this, is this peak Vince Russo calling the shots? No, Vince Vince Russo hasn't even come into WCW yet. This is oh, pre boy so pre so This is true vibes. This, this is, is like when WCW was literally just Monday Night Vibes. Yeah. It wasn't. There wasn't anything else to it. So around this time is when. So so this is ninety. This is the summer of ninety nine. This uh, this is pre, uh, like Austin's still going. He hasn't broken his neck yet. The Rock is the Rock. Like silk mm-hmm. shirt wearing Rock. Um. Triple H is is coming up as like that guy, and like WWE is just clearly taking off. They are a hundred percent going. All right, cool. Like getting everything going. WCW is floundering. You know they're like, oh shit! Like they did the finger poke of doom. They com- they reunited the NWO only to split them up again because Hogan got hurt. They turned DDP heel. Um, and people are just like, what? yeah, they're they're bringing in like ECW guys because they have a hardcore title, kind of, but not really. Um, oh, also, uh, no limit uh, soldiers. Master P uh, <laughs> comes in and starts a feud with uh, Kurt Henning, who is the who makes the West Texas Rednecks. Um, but like the it's like oh boy Conan Rey Mysterio B. Uh, Bo, or, uh, Brad Armstrong gets involved, all because Master P was a very popular act, musical act. Um, mm-hmm. B or B a very savvy businessman, and C one of his bodyguards wanted to do wrestling, so he's just True like, friend. all right, cool, yeah, like you're you're gonna you're Legends. gonna get involved with this, right? And you're like, yeah, yeah. Um, so the it, it goes it, like this. That's kind of the context of what the time we're in, right? At the top of the card, what? you also have um, like you also just had this is like peak like Kevin Nash is booking himself to be champion. You know, guys aren't doing jobs. Guys refuse to work with guys because they don't want to. They don't want to appear smaller or they don't want to appear older. So it's just it's just absolute madness. In the it, the asylum is just about to be unleashed, and Vin, Vin, Vince Russo is going to be the guy to clean it up apparently. So that's where we're oh, at in WCW. What, what status of the NWO are we at? Are we at where there's like 11 different NWOs? Or? This is this is post that. So the NWO okay. doesn't exist right now because they reunited. Um, they joined. They did the, the – you had Wolfpack and you had 
Hollywood, NWO Hollywood, and after uh, um, after Starcade '98, they do the finger poke of doom. Everybody's happy. NWO is one united force again, and then there's like so, uh, not really. Everybody's like, uh, you know, Hogan's the champ, but like, hey, Kevin Nash, it, it feels a like Hogan's ducking a rematch because. Or because you know, obviously Kevin Nash did the job. Like he took the finger poke of doom. He 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 took a dive for Hogan to be champion again, um, and like Hogan gets uh, injured. He like he blows his knee out. I think yeah, yeah. blows his knee out. Um, and then DDP turns heel in the middle of a match by putting a figure four on Hulk Hogan and taking advantage of the injury. Like, that's how he turned heel, was just being advantageous as a wrestler. Um, <laughs> WCW was really the Wild West, huh? Yeah, at this time, because at this same time, on camera, behind the camera, like, we were talking about the talent, but, like, in the company aspect of, like, the boardroom, uh, it was a mess because Time Warner was buying in buying Turner AOL was to come like they're just it, they're they're merging these thi- these entities and becoming monopolies without being actual monopolies and they didn't want wrestling and they were looking at this like what is this garbage so they kind of fell by the, fell by the wayside and were out there on an island doing a, their own yeah thing. a lot of a lot of what made WCW popular by being edgier and for skewed to a younger audience Corporate didn't want that anymore. They're like, whoa, 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 you can't say ass. So Hulk Hogan went from saying that he's gonna whoop the war, you know, the Ultimate Warrior's ass in in like late '98 into '99. He's kicking br- butt, brother. And you look at like he, he, they couldn't say stupid. They couldn't insult people. Like Turner, Turner had always been a. Like Ted Turner himself, uh, for a billionaire, uh, kind of had his morals in the right line. Like he did not like, um, they wouldn't say there used to be a mandate that you couldn't say a foreign weapon on WCW television because, because uh, it you know foreign is kind can be contextually used like as a as a slur. Like there's a uh, uh, foreigner. Like oh you're so like when in yeah. reality in the context of a wrestling match. A steel chair is foreign to wrestling. Like it is not. It's not. It's not natural. So the by def like by definition, it is a foreign object. Um, so they started calling it an international object because that's what it was. Like, but it wasn't. So it ter- it took it out of context and just put it in an entirely different context of like this is a this chair is international. So that was then. Fast forward a couple years and hey. They're being successful, being edgy, getting blood, being skewed for younger adults. Um, but now that you're trying to sell to a company, you're liquefying assets. You're trying to make the overhead as as short as you can, and that's kind of hard to do when you've guaranteed millions of dollars to guys like Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash, Ric Flair, Roddy Piper, you know Scott Steiner, Rick Steiner, old heads that are just like I can just make money here. So. That's where the context of what we're going to watch is. Now, this match, 1999, was not a great year for Rick Steiner. Uh, Rick Steiner, well, and Scott Steiner, because Scott Steiner kind of uh, kind of had back injuries and kept him out and wasn't sure if he'd ever wrestle the same again. He didn't. Um, Sting, on the other hand, in 1999, um, one of his, I feel like it was one of his better years from a presentation. He no longer has the tomato face of Wolfpack Sting. He's back to being black and white. Um, he does get hurt a couple times, but for the most part, he's as good a sting as you're going to get in the late 90s. Uh, Looks-wise, I mean, he's he's staying. Rick Steiner bulks down. We just I just talked about Rick Steiner last night uh, recording another, uh, another episode, and he is – much much thicker in that in the in the context of what we talked about him last night than right now he slims down he's wearing standard black uh trunks he turned heel i think this is around the time where he decided to do the inverse of scott steiner's facial hair scott steiner <laughs> you'll remember had blonde had dyed his beard except for this one streak on his chin That's right. right so S- S- rick steiner does the opposite. He dyes his hair jet black. Like, it was dark hair, but he dyes it jet black. 
put dot gets just for men for his beard, and it's all black except a stripe down the center that he bleaches. And I when I remember when I saw that, I'm like, there's no fucking way this is real life. <laughs> like you legitimately <laughs> have this. It's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. Um, yeah, that sounds like the '90s. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, 100%. That sounds pretty solid. Yeah, he's a dog face gremlin. He's beating up people. He's being like, they're like, you know what? Rick Steiner's a tough guy. Rick, just beat the shit out of people. And he's like, all right, I'll go do that. And then now, <laughs> and juxtapose that with Sting. I think, I think Rick Steiner lost the TV title, blamed Sting on it, and was basically like, oh yeah, I'm mad at you. And then they just fought in a false count anywhere match for no reason. And how this match ends oh, is going to be the story. So we're going to watch this. Story. We're going to watch this. Uh, do you guys have any predictions for what the finish of the match is going to be that would cause it to be discussed on the dork side? Oh, boy. Well, I mean, not only is this dork side, but this is late 90s WCW. So anything can really happen. Um, I'm going to say like Judy, you said, Bagwell, we're, we're truly in the- Judy Bagwell jumps – from the top of the ceiling and then hits Rick Steiner with a 450 splash. <laughs> not bad. That would have been number two for me on the list. But I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Dark Master comes out, trips over his entrance equipment again. Both wrestlers are so stunned that they fall out and it's a double count out. <laughs> in, a false what I'm rolling with. in a false count anywhere match, nonetheless. Yes, this is great. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna so watch we it. A, we get a double ten count. Double ca- ten count. <laughs> the ten shock count. master is the winner. <laughs> the shock master has just shocked them by his own ineptitude. Oh boy! So I'm going with. All right, so we're gonna watch this. You guys, you the the listener, we're gonna we're gonna hear. You, we'll, we'll we'll talk to you soon. Or or the yeti comes out. Oh, the yeti! And, and things get really wild. Oh, the Ron yeti Reese comes out and things. Things get wild, brother. <laughs> we'll explain why that's that's very funny after after this. Hey, it's just me again. Uh, just one more time reminding you that we are on Twitter, we are on Instagram at Dorkside Ring. Uh, we will be updating uh, basically when the, when the episodes guys any 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 tech issues that we have. You know, if you're wondering, you know where it is next week or any weeks in the future go to twitter go to instagram probably twitter if it's a little quicker but twitter instagram uh also um if you want to suggest a topic you know if you're a wrestling fan like me and you have some of these you know more wackier dorkier things to talk about even if it's well known let me know i want to hear it because if you want to hear it be talked about then you know i want to talk about it i want to give you the listener what you deserve which is what you want to be t- discussed uh, between you know friends, some of whom don't you know know anything about wrestling. Um, thank you so much for any any follows that come after this because I'm talking this, letting you give you some time to you know open up the browser, open up the app for any if you're either Twitter, either uh, Instagram. It's Dorkside Ring. That's who that's where who we are on the Twitters. Um, also, I do a little fun you know clips. I like. It's been a lot of fun to do so far. I've only done. Two, three, four, four. Two episodes worth. Four. Anyways, look, I'm just stalling for time so that you can continue to go search, hit that follow, and I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll get back to the interview. Uh, interview. It's just, a, just a fun, fun. It's not even an interview. I, I title it interview. It's not an interview. Look, I'm just rambling because I'm, I'm giving you more time if you didn't already weren't doing this. Look, that's all this is is me rambling so that you have time to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Dorkside Ring. I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Now back to the fun. All right, so we just watched. We just wrapped it up. Um, it was a good. It was a solid match. We were just, uh, you know, having a good talk, right? Like we were just. Yeah. It, it wasn't. It wasn't anything special, obviously, but a solid match. We were talking about how Sting was not good. Uh, I'll say this: <laughs> my prediction wasn't far off. <laughs> That's right. Judy Bagwell did not come from the top, of, but. Scott Sy- and and, and uh, the man too dangerous for UFC. That was how Tank Abbott built himself. Uh, mm. Like just out of nowhere, decides to choke the shit out of Sting. 
he, he puts a three second choke on with the towel and he's just solidified as a monster. So, so, so this, let's, let's, we've been doing this. So, it's a Falls Count Anywhere match, it's, it's a regular match. They start brawling to the back, which standard Falls Count Anywhere match, it obviously should finish somewhere other than the ring. As soon as they get to the back, Tank Abbott grabs, uh, has a towel and chokes the shit out of Sting and throws him into the middle of a hallway where two German shepherds attack him. And it is very obviously mm-hmm. that this was pre-recorded with a st- with with somebody trained to be attacked by dogs, pretending to be Sting because that so the, thing, the thing I noticed the thing I noticed was they see Sting and the dogs run up and then they cut away and they cut back and then all of a sudden Sting has white towel a bright white <laughs> yeah. towel wrapped around his hand that the dog starts biting. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, where'd you get dog, the towel from, bro? Yeah, the, the, other, the other dog comes and bites his knee pad, which clearly rips away. Mm hmm. <laughs> his, his, uh. the fucking, the, the face paint doesn't match the face paint before. Like, there's, you get a really good shot of them as yeah. he's walking up, and his face paint's messed up, but it's not messed up in the same way that it's messed up in this pre recorded video. He's got more of it yeah. than, in the video than he does in, in real life. Uh, they play it. Scott Steiner is just howling. He's not. He's not. He's not. He's not been involved in the match at all. He just shows up in the middle at the tor- at the end of it, howling, going, "Yeah, get him!" They're all yelling at him. And then Jake, CPF Jake, <laughs> big the Rottweiler, big the big old thick Rottweiler. ass Rottweiler. That motherfucker was huge. <laughs> They rented that dog out. There's no way none of them had a dog that, and then they walk oh, him yeah. out, tell him to go get him, and then it cuts out. Uh, <laughs> and I, it's like I can't, it's the clip of the dog getting it's the clip of the dog on the loose, and then it just cuts to like ten people just running towards the camera, <laughs> like assumingly to go help Sting, and then you just get a shot of the crowd. It's like what's going on here? <laughs> Fucking <And then> Doug. <laughs> Steiner and Steiner both just roll out of the back then. <laughs> Doug Dillinger <laughs> sprinting down with his forces of people, just just <laughs> running, going to save fucking Sting. And then the best part they is got, like, <laughs> they got the they got the extra large bag of kibbles and bits, boy. They got, <laughs> <laughs> he needed it. <laughs> like he got it like they make it see it's like so they cut, right? And then they do the back they do the backstage like Oh my god, like they're attacking Sting. We can't show you this because it's too graphic. Like the idea is, is this man is, is being mauled to death by three dogs, <laughs> which if you're a dog per- like a pro dog person, you're going to hate this. Like you hate this the idea that people are sick using dogs to be be weapons practically. Uh if you're somebody who thinks dogs are violent, this only reaffirms this. Like <laughs> Of all the things we were talking about, like WCW being thoughtful of, like don't say foreign. Hey, think about like hey, think about this gimmick and this gimmick, like or this or that, like um, like Booker T and Stevie Ray before they were Booker T and Stevie Ray of Harlem Heat. Like they were Harlem Heat, they were Harlem Heat, but they came out and this is going, this is horrendous. They were managed by Colonel Robert Lee. Oh wow! I didn't know this. Who I did not know that. Oh my Rob, god! Robert Lee Parker, the the manager, dresses like a typical Southern plantation owner. Oh my Colonel god! Colonel Sanders oh, style, boy. white ju- oh, and he is six eight. This man is a large human being. He wears the hat. He wears the tie. He's got the string tie. He's he's got the the Tennessee was, accent to match. Was was this one of Kane's first gimmicks? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, this is a whole. This man's whole gimmick, his whole career is as this. He's always been like this manager, okay. and he he co- he has these two guys because at this time he has he has a st- he's a manager. He's got a stable. He's got a force. He's got groups of people that he has acquired and that are his men. These two, um, it was acquired. Is a, uh, acquired. Mm, yeah. No. Uh, Booker T and and Stevie Ray were you were not no, were not always Booker T and Stevie Ray. I believe they were Kane and um so, uh somebody else. Hold on, is um Kane and it was spelled C A I N like the like the um mm-hmm. 
like the actual Herman, like Herman Cain. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So they debuted as, as the Harlem Heat with Booker renamed Cole, and Stevie Ray was Kane. So it was Kane and Cole, but it was Kane as in like K A N E, like Big Daddy Kane. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so it was Cole Cole Kane. Cole Kane, yeah. Right. Um, they and this doesn't get brought up in their their Wikipedia though, but they were brought out on a non television event where. They were in chains, being led oh, to the wow. ring in what? chains by oh, no. a white plantation owner, practically. And somebody's oh, like, ah, uh, no, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not. Like, this is where we draw the line. <laughs> and then they, like, it's just like, oh, that's what it was. Um, so it's Colonel Parker. This makes it even worse. Colonel Parker's stable was of studs, he had studs. So, like, they were studs, and that's why they got presented on television versus his other wrestlers. It's just – it's bad. And that's Booker T. Like, that's – so that was 1993. We're 1999, six years later, and we're thoughtful of those things as thoughtful as 99 can get uh, and, yeah. and wrestling can get. But, no, dogs, sick them. They're attack dogs. It's specifically – and I guess it works with, like, you know, the dog face gremlin. But, like, just oversell it. And then the Steiners come out dragging the referee who wasn't even with them in the first place. Like, you don't see the referee follow them to the back. He just appears in the back. <laughs> and they just drag he him into there. the ring and be like, he won, right? He won. He, count- he pinned him one, two, three, right? And he's like, yep. Mm-hmm. It's like- <laughs> yeah, we didn't see the pinfall. How do we know? <clears throat> well, just reassure them. Tell them, tell them that you, yeah. Yeah, tell them that you did it, right? Like if, if, if need this, to expect me to trust him, this random referee. I, you know, he wasn't there for the fall. Just, he didn't I, see Sting get destroyed by uh, Fido. <laughs> Fido, <laughs> the Homeward Bound gang, were going after him. Yeah. Baldo and Fido were going, were tag teaming the shit out of him. Then came in Big Bubba, big, big Jake. Yeah, Big Jake comes in <laughs> for the finish. Like it was just, and and this is, and we were talking about this where Scott Steiner had like back issues. You could tell he's walking pretty stiff. Like he, oh yeah, he didn't look right. No, and he's like, ah oh, shit, like okay, like I gotta fucking hold this dog who wants to attack. And they, and you could tell like the dog is like being baited off screen by like his handler to come get him because he's dragging big ass Scott Steiner who's like at this point probably close to three fifteen of just like steroids and and thick muscle. That, and he's that getting dog dragged. was called 265 with no <laughs> hormones added. That no. dog was an absolute unit. That was a that was a big that was a good boy. Remember, no such thing as a bad dog, just bad people. Oh, of course that was not. Good he did dog. his job correctly. <laughs> he was, that was good acting on his part. Fantastic actor. Get that man into the uh into the uh, screen actors uh, guild. Um, yeah, that could be the next next villain in the next Air Bud movie. I bet. <laughs> Yo, can you imagine that? Is that Air Bud the next like the, well, like the Air? I guess, what are they Air Buddies now? It's like they go to a wrestling match and they want to become wrestlers now. It's like, oh, these guys. Hey, these, these... hey don't let Vince hear you. <laughs> yeah. WWE Studios yeah. is about to be banging on your door. Hey, yeah, hey, cut the Dr- check. Drake Maverick before Drake Maverick is trying to stop oh, the, uh, boy. The, the the Air Buddies and they tear him down Evil. to the ground. Evil, uh, evil Drake Maverick. Oh, it, it writes itself, and it's a fantastic Vince. Um, I'll take ten percent royalties. Cut the check. <laughs> I so so they do this. They go Baltimore. They're, this is also peak Scott Steiner. Just saying what everybody like. Basically, Scott Steiner would go to an internet messaging board and take his take whatever they said. Like he would take hip hop lyrics, and then the messaging board, and he would combine them. Like that's where he became the big bad booty daddy, uh-huh. where like he put girls on their back and they'd just be saying his name, like. Kink? No, that's not right. <laughs> Let me take that back. Like, oh boy, he's just like, oh, geez. it's just like, man, like, my God, like, like Scott, where are you getting these? Where are you getting these these promos? And he's like, I listen to Big Daddy Kane. Yeah, <laughs> it's like what. On uh, hotnewhiphop.com. Yeah, and then I go to the messaging board. I go to, uh, you know, uh, Dave Meltzer's me- messaging board, and I get whatever they're saying. I say about WCW. WCW sucks. <laughs> Rick- <laughs> that sounds good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it. That sounds. The crowd like- chants, hooray! <laughs> and then Rick Stein is like, "Hey, Baltimore, who's the worst city in America? Baltimore." And then they just like, 
Boo. Like, oh, you fucking, got us. Fucking got them. Fucking, fucking got fried them. their asses. Oh, <laughs> uh, God. I forgot how bad. And, like, it's, like, I've I'm, I've been, like, a dive, like, a rewatch of, like, not rewatch, but first time. So it's a dive of, like, um, uh, of WCW. And I forgot how awful that that strip of bleached facial hair is on Rick Scott Steiner. It is so bad. So bad. Like, it's terrible. It's... <laughs> like, it's I don't... so bad. It's I... something. Like I feel like if you if he didn't have the full beard, it wouldn't be so bad. Like if he had similar to Scott, where he had just a goatee, but he's got the full beard and and the full beard is so jet black. It's, it's so like deep. Mike Shishetsky hair <laughs> black. Rick Steiner doesn't have any real friends because a real friend would have told him, "Hey man, I don't, I don't, I don't think know. you should go outside like this." I, don't, I mean, you remember, on TV. Nah, he's got. Nah, you gotta remember, he's a wrestler, so all of his friends are wrestlers. Like, yeah, that'll get over. Like, yeah, fuck, it's true. It's like, true. like they were rocking fanny packs after fanny packs were like, fo- like no more, like no, not allowed mullets. Like, like wrestling. If they had just kept with the mullet, like they're now having to get back on the mullet train. But they were ahead of time. They like they gave up on the mullets in like 20, 2011. And like ten years later, mullets are back in style. Like so long as you keep it up, like they would have just waited ten years, you would have been fine. You would have been ahead of the curve. Wrestling, like Jesus. R- wrestling style is so far, so far behind. So far, like, behind. I think outside of like, I would say only really right now NXT is about the only ones who are kind of on with the current times. Outside mm. of like the Young Bucks and their fake ass Jordans, but we, that's another conversation for another day. They're like the Usos. The Usos have always been like streetwear wise. Like they've always been wearing like the good shit. Like ever Kofi's since, well yeah. known for good yeah. kicks. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I mean, I've seen the Usos. That's that's more recent. Yeah, well, I was because just, they, well, they were face face paint. Yeah, doing the hockey dance, coming to the stage and all that. Stuff. I mean, but they were always. I mean, they still. I mean, that was still them. Like it, it's very clear that when they turned heel, all they did was just stop wearing that, and they were like just being themselves. It, you know. Modern yeah. day Samoans, Roman's wearing his Jordans. I hate real quick. I hate that Sam Roberts a sneakerhead. Like I hate it because he is? Sam Roberts is a big sneakerhead. Like, I didn't know that he, he he's anal- like his analysis of Roman Reigns based off of the sn- the shoes he was wearing has been like kind of on point, and I hate to give him credit for it because I really don't like Sam Roberts. <laughs> like, but it's just like, oh, he's like, hey, he's wearing the Jordan these, and he, which Jordan wore when he came back, you know, in, you know, wearing yeah. wearing forty five. This is what he wore in the second. Tri- you know, this is what he wore game six against. And I'm like, what the? Fu- where is what? Like this fucking <laughs> booger eating motherfucker? Like, <laughs> like no, no, Sam Roberts, absolutely not, not disparaging booger eaters. If you but your then, boogers, like, that, go ahead. That can, that can go. That can go wrong too. Because oh yeah. There's, there's another uh, wrestling podcast which will be unnamed, and they have one member who claims to be of the sneakerhead ilk, and mm. so you know they will be like, "Oh, the Young Bucks are wearing the Dior Jordan Ones, and it's and those shoes are fifteen thousand dollars a pair, and it's like okay, <laughs> those are clearly fake." Yeah. Pretty sure they spelled Dior wrong on the bottom. <laughs> they spelled. But I, I I see what they're going for, mm. but. Hey, look, I mean, their core audience doesn't know shit. Like, yeah, it, no. their core audience thinks Max, Max Caster actually has bars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Max Caster has like one line a month that hits, and I'm like, ooh, so you do understand that you're that you're supposed to sting a little bit here, okay? Max, Max Caster wants to be Joey Badass so bad. <laughs> he is. I. Oh my god. But I watched. We were. Uh, we were ironically watching like a highlight. And it was like the funniest bar, funniest uh, and best bar. You disses from Max Caster. And it's a nine minute video. I'm like, wow, this guy would have been like on AEW Dark a lot. No, they played every single one that he's ever had. I'm like, that is far too much TV time or any time dedicated to that man's fucking battle rapping uh like he's had two good lines it's like the oral sessions line was a good one and then the next and the other good one was basically saying like hey you know chris daniels you you know cd you're you're an outdated format it's like oh smart okay you know i like that oh, one i guess real, real rap son real, real rap it's so bad um but the real reason we watch this 
is because we're watching Sting now. You now, JTR. You said what got like Impact Wrestling is really where you knew Sting. What's your like wrestling back? Like we all we're all real shooters here. We all watch we watch the wrestling. We keep up with it. When did you like start watching wrestling? So I remember when I was in I want to say like kindergarten, like around that time. That's when Eddie passed. Eddie Guerrero mm-hmm. passed, and then like. I didn't like I knew who Eddie Guerrero was. I knew what wrestling was, but I didn't like watch it cuz like I just didn't know how to find it. It was one day, it was like 2008. I remember the first moment I was hooked on wrestling. It was like the end of a SmackDown in August. I think they were building towards the Edge and Undertaker TLC match. Okay. And he it was an episode of The Cutting Edge. He brought in Mick Foley, who was on commentary at the time. And Mick Foley was like, "I I don't see it in you Edge anymore. I don't I don't see what I saw at WrestleMania 22 when you set me on fire or whatever. And then Edge just beat the ever-living shit out of Mick Foley. <laughs> like, he just, like, destroyed Mick Foley. Give him a whooping I'd never seen before. And I'm like, this. I'm like, I'm all in on this. I need to see this. And um, I didn't have cable at the time. So anytime I watched an episode of Raw or SmackDown, it showed up on, like, Telemundo. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so, like, Carlos Cabrera was really the first... <laughs> Commentator, that's I knew. Voice, that's the voice of wrestling to you. Yeah, so like, yeah, so like, I, yeah. JTR is like, and, um, keep your Tony Giovanni, just keep your Jim Ross, just keep, <laughs> hell, even yes. keep your Michael Cole. Give, Carlos. Give me Carlos Cabrera and Hugo yes. Svinovich. That's yes. right. <laughs> Give them their flowers, damn it. But no, at that point, 08 was when I was like watching every week. Mm-hmm. And attention. I vividly remember Jeff Hardy winning the WWE title. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember Cena coming back and beating Jericho at Survivor Series. And uh, I've been in it ever since, man. Wow. Like, a little break here and there. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you get sick of the wrestling and when they're doing dumb stuff. But, nah, I've pretty much been there ever since. All right. Crawford, what about you, Mike? I know we both uh, re- but we were, were big fans of the Firefly Funhouse uh, and, uh, you know, and Bray Wyatt, The Fiend. Oh. That might that may or may not have been your original idea. I I won't say that Bray Wyatt stole your idea. I'm just saying it might have been your idea. Uh, but you were on the same time. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Where'd you uh, Where'd you get your start as a uh, as a as a wrestling fan? So, PTR, you must be significantly younger than both. Being wrong. <laughs> yeah, because when you said kindergarten and and that, I was like, okay, so you must be 19. That's fair. Uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm 23. Yeah, yeah. It's, I was, gonna, yeah. I was, that was like, man, like, there's no way kindergarten in 05, Like, nah, there's no way. <laughs> yeah. this man, no way. This man's older than 24. Like, no way. Like, doing just quick math. Yeah. <laughs> Secretly younger than broad. So <laughs> I don't worry. I'll keep that out. The real age. I'll keep the real I age wish. out. So no way. <laughs> I wish. Yeah. So, but, so uh, I remember. I, my introduction to wrestling was I was super young. I had to have been like less than younger than seven and walked in to my mom's room and she had wrestling on. She was always like, she was probably watching it for the ads and stuff. Yeah. You know, I got to respect it. I get it how you live. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I walk in and I'm like, what are you watching? And she said, wrestling. You want to sit down and watch? So I remember that. I don't remember what it was. I think it was like a Monday Night Raw or something. And so that was my introduction. So from there, I got, you know, kind of into it at a younger age. This was like, I had to have been like 2001, 2002, but it was all exclusively WWF stuff that I remember watching because my, my WCW knowledge didn't come until basically the network and being able to watch the Monday Night Wars and finally start doing, you know, research and all that stuff and figuring stuff out. And so when I was younger, we went to a couple events, uh, some live events, and then we went to Armageddon in Miami in the early 2000s, and we had floor seats, and that's when I was, like, locked in for life, basically. So there have been a couple small breaks. Uh, once my younger brother – started getting into it i took i probably taken two or three years off and then started getting back into it when he started getting into it um and since then i've pretty much kept up for the past probably like before the network started so it had to have been like five or six years now i've been pretty much on it keeping up to date i will say yeah, this so um me, oh, sorry, me, go ahead, me and bray wyatt did 
me and Bray Wyatt did split the proceeds for uh, all of the Fiend's earnings. We came up with that together. But <laughs> I will say this: if if you aren't a wrestling fan, if you are a wrestling fan, or you were and you want to get back into it, now is a very good time to get back into it because the product mm-hmm. has been it's been incredible. Um, I know this is what this specific podcast is for, but just don't watch Raw. Raw, <laughs> give or take, but tap, yeah. tap into watch, everything watch. else because everything else has been T- amazing. Yeah. yeah. NXT, AEW, Impact, SmackDown's probably been the best wrestling show of, of this year by far. All you really need opinion. to do with Raw is just see what Bobby Lashley's doing. That's all you really see need to do. See what Bobby Lashley's doing, see what my best friend Drew is doing, see yeah. what, like, Kofi and Xavier of the New Day's doing. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm a, I'm a sicko. I'm still watching three hours of Raw. Like I'm, I'm absolutely. Listen, I'm I, I am too. I'm, there every <laughs> night. I'm just sitting there, like you know what? This last past week was pretty good. That the last segment kind of fell off the rails there, but everything else was pretty good. So I'm, I'm I enjoy like I'm like I'm good. Like uh, yeah, I I always have Raw on in the background while I'm doing something else. But it's yeah. just to, like mm-hmm. peek in. It's like, oh, what's yep. going on over here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it uh if there's any anything for anyone to get into right now, it's it's Roman Reigns. Absolutely. Roman Reigns can bring in absolutely anyone. That whole storyline has been I honestly don't believe WWE has even written any part of that because it's been too perfect so he, far. He is a he is psychotic. He is true like man, he, that man He's doing real toxic masculinity shit with like manipulating. Oh, it's, like he's it's rubbing. Incredible. He'll be rubbing the back of like Jay's neck as he's like telling him like Nah, Jay. Like Nah, dude. Come on. Like you know, I don't want you to go back to being just another USO. Your main event, Jay. My man. While he's like rubbing the back of his head, like true manipulative bullshit. And it's like this man needs to be in prison. Hey. This man's about to do something. I'm looking. Uh, I'm like, this is delicious. It's so good. And for wrestling, it's so it's gonna, good. It's gonna uh, be so. It's gonna be so sad when Hollywood sweeps him up. Uh, oh boy. man, it's gonna. It's, to it. it's gonna. It's gonna suck because he's fucking killing it right now. Speaking of Hollywood. mm Hmm. I got nothing. Um. Oh wait, actually, hold on. <clears throat> Speaking of Hollywood, in Hollywood, there's two basketball teams: the Lakers and the Clippers. Also, the birthplace of Paul Pierce. Which we're oh, talking not, not, It's mm. not. It's not. But it's. I'm just gonna stretch it because that's what we're really here to talk about. Sting. It was said in the Discord, the Tyler I M CPF chat was. We were talking about Paul Pierce being a bum, and I said, Paul Pierce is nothing more than Sting. He's overrated because of his placement in history and the people that surrounded him. And it was yes. great. Now, you can talk about yes. like, crack of the bat. I knew, like, oof. There was, there was only, like, six people in, in the chat at that time who <laughs> nope. understood what you meant, but nope. everyone who did understand. He, that man knew. Like, oh boy, I like this is the one. This is the part that I'm definitely clipping and putting the like social media. He's Sting is just Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce thinks he thinks he's more important to the history of basketball than he really is. Same with Sting. Sting is important. Like, I like I'm not saying that Paul Pierce isn't. He absolutely certainly played a role, especially in the late 2000s and the rise of LeBron becoming. LeBron, like without Paul Pierce, we don't get the LeBron stare. Mm-hmm. Like we we don't get mm-hmm. oh, yeah. we, we we don't get LeBron walking off after losing to the to the Celtics. Like, but that's about it. It's literally he's one part. Like Sting was a year long. He's basically the year long where Sting was a super over baby face because he didn't do anything but stare broodingly and attack the, the NWO every so often. That's Paul Pierce from like 2000 like 8 to 2010. Like they brought they had to bring in more talent to be, become a more successful team cuz Paul Pierce wasn't good enough. So was Sting. Sting wasn't good enough just to be by himself. He needed Hulk Hogan, Kevin Garnett. He needed Kevin Nash. You know, Ray Allen. It, it's such a great comparison too because Every era of Paul Pierce lines up directly with every era of Sting. Mm-hmm. So, like, Sting in WCW is Paul Pierce with the Celtics, right? Yep. Sting in Impact is Paul Pierce with the Nets. Yep. You know what I mean? It's yep. like, <laughs> things should go. That might be a little disrespectful to Sting's time in Impact, but, you know, I, it's like, I feel not like as good as it should have been. It, it's, but it's had it, some moments. Yeah, it's hard because Sting in Impact was like, again, I, I'm biased. 
we were talking a little bit about like that that was when you got introduced to Sting JTR. Like for yeah. me, that's when I really got into Sting, which was you know, he showed up every couple months to 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 wrestle and then like he, you know, started becoming a main fixture. But like <laughs> Like Joker Sting is a thing, and it is fucking ridiculous, <laughs> right? Like, like that's another Joker Sting is another. We're gonna talk about the dark side. I'm adding it right now, where he was just saw Dark Knight and was like, "I got face paint. Yes. I can be the Joker. I <laughs> want that." <laughs> it's. And, um... I think I think one of the one of the things about Sting and Paul Pierce too is that the fans, Sting fans, are so dedicated to Sting. They love Sting. Mm-hmm. And Paul Pierce is the same way. Boston fans idolize oh my God. Yeah. Paul Pierce like right, to, me... to no end. And so the, the, the fans are kind of like just painting this grandiose picture in their mind about these two, just making them way bigger than they actually are. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> it, he's again, he has his place. Sting has his place. So I, <laughs> I went and found the post. It's literally so Paul Pierce's thing, Kevin Garnett's Hogan. I don't think we're going to disagree with that. Like that's he's the most important part of this picture, Kevin Garnett. Like it, Kevin Garnett mm-hmm. was the, the catalyst really to that team. Mm-hmm. Uh and and weirdly enough like doesn't get like an, I feel like I don't know, I'm not a Celtics fan, but I don't see them talk about Kevin Garnett like positive like not super positive like I mean he's probably going to have his number retired but like I don't know. I guess I can technically Attest to this because I am from the New England area. Mm. I grew up a Boston oh, oh sports fan. Oh boy! Oh boy! Can I shoot uh, for a second, bro? Yo, yo hey, hey, hey! Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> these Boston sports fans, you insecure ass! I can't believe it. You win eighteen champions. I don't even know how many championships they've won since I've been born. It's crazy. It's too many. And all y'all you do is complain. Oh, Kyrie left. Bitch, he doesn't like you. Like, <laughs> I can see why he left. He goes, Oh, I'm gonna stay. And every time you keep asking him, Oh, can you are you gonna stay? Like he said he's gonna stay. Why do you keep bothering him about it? And then he doesn't stay because your organization's trash. You got a GM who refuses to make a move. You got boy genius at the coach who's, you know, he can't figure out a three two zone. And it's like they're like, oh, Jason Tatum's not a star. Jason Tatum's not going to lead this team to a championship. Who's he passing the ball to? Like, <laughs> man, I can't wait. I, I just uh, can't wait. I'm, I'm. Listen, I am dying. I am so happy that the Boston sports teams are all trash because I get to see these. I get to see these ingrateful sports fans suffer. Just. Have have fun with five years of Mac Jones. I'm gonna be laughing my ass off over here. <laughs> listen, you know, and I get it. You know, listen, I was a Boston sports fan, Trouble Teen. I was one, but I've grown since then. I understand, like, hey, listen, like that's not cool. I I know people that punched holes in walls over over the Bruins losing a playoff game. That's not cool. That's not you know. I'm saying that's not fun, but. <laughs> I like I'm, to say I'm and, happy that you were able to make it out. Of yeah, that. right. Yeah, I'm glad. Yeah, I should. I'm off that. I'm off that narcotic. Um, that's good. It, man. good that, that's good. all I got on Boston fans, man. Just, <laughs> just don't take it too seriously, man. You're yeah. scaring. You're scaring everybody away. Scaring the hoes. <laughs> scaring the hoes. Yeah, uh, you know what I mean. So um, to, to, to come back around. Yeah. <laughs> um, Paul. Every era of Sting is Paul Pierce. So Sting yeah. and Impact is Paul Pierce with the Nets. Sting in WWE is Paul Pierce with the Wizards. You know, he, like, came back. That Like, his debut was really solid. Paul Pierce called bank or called game or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Sting in AEW right now is Paul Pierce with the Clippers. Just And, 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 and we're all Draymond screaming, you ain't Kobe. You think you Kobe? No one love you like that. Like, Kobe. like that's that's Boy, the internet right now is yelling at Sting. Be like, hey, man, no, you're not Dusty Rhodes. Nobody cares. No one loves you like that. Like, like, oh, it's, it's Sting with the Clippers, and, or it's uh, Paul Pierce with the Clippers, and it's Paul Pierce on ESPN as well. Oh, <laughs> no, see, I'm waiting for Sting's Paul Pierce on ESPN, where he just gets to be an old crotchety man, like just yelling about things and making himself more important than he really is. Like he's kind of doing that, yeah, but like he's not all the way there to where I'm just like, like he, like he, some of his promos where he's like, yeah, I came to AEW because it feels like. 
feels like home. It feels like 1997 all again over. I'm like, no, absolutely not, my guy. No, we're not doing this. We're not going to say he's stuck in the, past. the only the only thing about AEW that's 1997 is Cody Rhodes, and he has nothing to do with him. So look, it's their that's not event. it. It's their two most marketable stars, Chris Jericho and Sting. That's that's what it is. Um, uh, but no, so, I'll say this: Sting's also not going to get fired for having a fun party. Oh no, that that man will get That'll fired. Never for, happen. Never. That man is going to. But he would behave like Paul Pierce at a party. He would live stream the party. Mm-hmm. He'd be like, mm-hmm. "Look at all the <laughs> sin going on out here. Look at all this sinning going on." He'll live stream the party <laughs> while <laughs> also recording the live stream with another phone he's got. <laughs> he's and, and then so P, so P gets in the chat and says, "Where's Renee?" <laughs> oh brother. <laughs> says, oh, says brother. "Where's Renee Paquette?" At? <laughs> <laughs> Where's, where's Jade Cargill? Oh yeah, where's Jade Cargill? <laughs> shout out, shout out, Soapy and Dan Morse code. Oh, uh, no. But yeah, oh, no. no. So <laughs> the idea now, I'm now we're gonna work on a Photoshop of Soapy saying "Where's Renee Paquette?" and then she's gonna be sting on Paul Pierce's face. Um, yes. So, <laughs> all right. So the rest of the comparison, right? Because I, I went, we we went into this hole of like, all right, well, if Sting's if Paul Pierce is Sting, then who's this person? So like. I, I did the rest of, like, the, the starting five of the Celtics, right? Paul uh, uh, Kendrick Perkins is Scott Hall. He's <laughs> he's a big man who isn't really reliable to, to do with stuff, um, but when he's on, man, he's on. You know, they're undefe- they never lost a playoff series when, all, when Kendrick Perkins was healthy. It's like saying, like, they never lost a ratings war when Scott Hall wasn't was, was sober. Oh boy! <laughs> Sorry, he's he, he got sober. He's yeah. good now. Uh, <laughs> I hope Rondo, so at least. R- Rondo's yeah. Goldberg. He's the young guy yes, who came out of nowhere. Great. Came out of nowhere, prolonged the the dynasty a little bit, kept them afloat, kept them competitive. You know, went went. You know, eye to you eye. You said this. I stood up and applauded. I was like, "Yes, this is perfect." Goes eye to eye, and he's like the only answer for Aust- Stone Cold Steve Austin. Who is LeBron? Somebody who was not like taken serious by Sting and the others. Like, I mean, like in a sense of like, it's WCW. They fired him. They sent him a FedEx with a when he had a broken arm, um, mm-hmm. or I think it was a torn shoulder. One of the two. Um, so, like, he's at this point of having. So that, that, that's the Goldberg one. Austin is LeBron. I, that got a little contentious, right? You, you know, like ah, oh. it's like no, like. If you consider Stone Cold like one of the greats, then LeBron is Stone Cold because of the, how this works. <laughs> like if we're going to do this time. He's the guy. He's the guy who overtakes Paul Pierce and Sting, and becomes like the face of wrestling. LeBron is the face of basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I said Kobe was the Undertaker. He had always been there. He 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 is the beloved version of Sting. Obviously. You know, MAGA taker oh. is a thing, so not as much now, but mm-hmm. people didn't speak about Sting the way they spoke about Taker, because Taker was always there, and he always had his head on straight. Always like, had the also, respect of everyone else. Yeah. While, while growing up, the only thing, like the most thing I heard, like I guess most people talked about Sting was like, oh man, he should go face Taker. Like that's like... Yeah. When, you're, when your comparison, or like I guess whatever you want to call it is the most talked about discussion amongst a certain generation. That says a lot about you. Mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And yeah. it's not like, it's not a bad thing. It's just like, you're just, you know, it's just not built different. <laughs> 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 and like, so and, and on another level, right? Like, so you had, you had the Lakers and Celtics, which they have this historic, you know, historic series. They have magic and bird, you know, Kareem and Bill Russell or Kareem or, or Bill and, and this and like Chamberlain when Wilt was on the Lakers for like a cup of coffee. Like you have these overlapping at all times where these two teams somehow always find each other every 20 years or so. Um, so then compare that to WCW and WWE that if Sting is Paul Pierce, like the face of the franchise, then – Kobe's the face of the Lakers. It, it works on so many levels that I was very happy with that one. Like I, I was very happy with the Goldberg one for Rondo. Like it, it, it's a stretch when you're just like, well, you know, Goldberg was great. It's like, yeah, he was. And then he went other places and wasn't so great. 
Also, mm-hmm. he takes himself too seriously. What does Rajon Rondo do? Take himself too mm-hmm. seriously. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, also won a championship when he probably shouldn't have won a championship. Mm-hmm. Bubble, mm-hmm. Mickey Mouse championship. Um, Tim Duncan. Twice with Goldberg. <laughs> Tim Duncan is Mick Foley. And you might be like, well, Mick Foley is ridiculous. I mean, have you ever seen Tim Duncan after he wins a championship? The man goes hard. He gets he needs to be carried home by Tiago Splitter. <laughs> that's his hardcore match. That's him. That's Cactus Jack Tim Duncan. Brother Love, you know, Dude Love is uh is you know him with the uh like him just it's chilling. Tim Duncan with he's the open toe shoes. <laughs> he's just chilling, right? He's wearing tracks. He's wearing Nike shorts that go below his knees and, and open toe sandals. Like he's he's living his life. Uh, and then mankind is him on the floor. Like that's how you know. That's like all right. This guy is going to do some stuff. Also, had a really long career where he had different phases and different faces. Where mm-hmm. he was the young guy. Where he was the MVP. Where he was the old man playing twenty minutes a game and still somehow putting up very similar numbers. Went out graciously. Yeah, like Mick Foley's still going. Like he's going out graciously as well. Like sure there was a TNA run, but mm-hmm. uh, you know. Tim Duncan had a couple of missteps along the way that trade requests to Orlando. That's, you know. So, yeah. I wonder like, who dropped the ball there. Hmm. Orlando, probably. Uh, <laughs> what is what is Doc Rivers come into this? Doc Rivers, he's pro Doc Rivers has to be Eric Bischoff, right? Like yeah. there's no yeah. other there's no other way because he talks so reverently about the NWO. He's only and again, Doc Rivers is my current the current head coach of, of the my Philadelphia 76ers. I own them. They're mine. That's why I can say me. Poor thing. Um, <laughs> so, but things are looking good for us right now. So, th- this only holds water up until we win a championship and Doc Rivers ha- has a different championship. But right now, the only thing keeping Doc Rivers as revered as a head coach, other than him being a genuinely decent guy for all purposes and well-respected as a coach, but, like, to fans, people are like, well, he's a championship coach. That's like saying, well, Eric Bischoff – Beat un- beat you know Vince McMahon in the rating wars twenty years ago, yep. like that that it's got to be that where Eric Bischoff is Doc Rivers and Doc Rivers is Eric Bischoff. We, you know if Eric Bischoff ever hired his daughter's ex boyfriend or <laughs> um, who, who cheated on her? No, no. But he did he was, did in fact he has hired his son before and promptly fired his son. So. Hey, shout out Aces and Eight. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think, right? Like, I feel like Danny Ainge w- could also be Eric Bischoff, where like no, he only I like did that comparison more. Yeah, I do like that one more. Yeah, where he o- where he did he did one good thing almost 20 years ago, and people still talk about that as that's the reason why. And meanwhile, none of the other stuff he does is really good. Yeah, and then you talk <laughs> about all the the almost and. Yeah, we were so close, and oh, we, we almost had this had... idea and didn't pull the trigger and all that stuff. We almost we <laughs> almost brought CM Punk to TNA. We yeah. were this close. Hey, we almost got Brock Lesnar. You know, we almost they. I mean, they legitimately almost got Brock Lesnar, but like, they, still, they talk about yeah. like that would have saved the company. Like, no, they wouldn't have. Um, and it just didn't happen. But you can always talk about it. In hindsight yeah, that we it's were also so like Brock Lesnar is Brock Lesnar. You couldn't get Miles Turner. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't. <laughs> You settled for Evan Fournier. Oh God! You fucking oh, settled. You, you couldn't. You could. You couldn't keep fucking Mark Marrow. Like are you gonna sit here and tell me, like, oh Jesus Christ, uh, Mark Marrow Brock somehow Lesner... Gordon Hayward in this scenario, <laughs> right. and Brock Lesnar somehow is like Kawhi Leonard. Like we're so close. Yeah, you have to. Is, is the person that they were? So, is the original? Whoever was like the first? We would have had to give up. We would have to give up AJ Styles and Samoa Joe. <laughs> I don't know if you wanted to do that. We would have given well, up we air styles. And they end up leaving Rock anyway. Rock and they end up leaving anyway. We had, we were gonna have yep. to give oh, up. We were right. to give up air styles and air Fran- Paris. Like we don't give up air. You don't give them up. Like what? <laughs> we're gonna have to give up the ju- the young dragons. Like no. Like what? Uh, we would have had to give up suicide. We can't do that. He's on the cover <laughs> of our video game. Jeez, uh, <laughs> cannot wait to talk about suicide. <laughs> it's gonna be so good. Um, now this is the one I'm trying to. F- I-, I got two. Like these, these two guys are hard to figure out. So this is the workshopping part of this, right? Okay. Okay. Dwayne Wade and Dwight Howard. One of them is The Rock. One of them is Triple H. One of them won a title as a star, so I think that automatically makes Dwayne Wade the walk. The Rock. Thank so that's you. What, yeah. so so, cool. so Miami, yeah. Miami Heat fan. So I was thinking that too, right? Like 
he's the rock, right? Like in this idea, he's the rock. He's the he he's contemporarily, you know, with Austin. He they've been rivals, but they've also been teammates. You know, the same company. But then I was thinking. Mm-hmm. The Rock and Triple H were rivals, and then they were legitimately teammates, and they won tag. T- they won all the gold, so that's where I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Plus, Triple H is respected and you know like highly revered post career, much the same way as Triple H is. And also, Dwight Howard is not respected at all. Still in his playing career <laughs> by anyone, yeah, by anyone by except anyone. Jo- except Joel Embiid. <laughs> which, if Joel Embiid respects him, then I'm begrudgingly respecting him until until he's no longer on the team. But yeah. you know, uh, anything to keep my star happy. Uh, so that's where I'm like, okay, well, and then you go, Dwight. His career is like shorter. Like his prime is shorter. The Rock's prime as a wrestler. It wasn't all that. It was 99 to 2002 where he was, like, the guy. And that's Dwight Howard being the guy from, like, 08 to 2011. Also very interesting how without Kevin Garnett in that series, Dwight Howard beats Paul Pierce. Mm, interesting. You know? without, Hulk Hogan, mm, without Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Also, his prime ends when he goes to Hollywood. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. It just doesn't. But then, but then you have, but then you have The Rock coming back, coming for, back. You know the the Miz and and all that. Yeah, and that that could be D Wade coming back to Miami to lead. You know, pseudo lead a struggling team like WWE was struggling at that time to really find a next star. Yeah, I think Wade being The Rock and Triple because Triple H won a title late in his career. So did Dwight Howard. They, mm. they're they like, you kind of go, yeah, they were good, but man, they just really became just like annoying despite being good mm-hmm. where you're just like, shut the fuck up, Dwight. Just, sh- just play basketball. Just be good at basketball, damn it. Um, then whereas- you got Triple H being in, you know, the higher ups in WWE and Wayne Wade owning a piece of the potential finals candidate, Utah Jazz. Yeah, it's. It's very weird. It's very weird that both of them fit. I, I don't think it's. I don't think it's a one to one. I think Dwayne Wade being the Rock, probably in the sense of if because if, if if Sting is if Sting or if Paul Pierce is Sting, then we have to go into the like okay. Then that means yeah, no that that probably means that Wade is Rock and Dwight is Triple H. Wayne Wade also has this TV show coming out, so the, the foray into Hollywood. Yeah, all right. I think I think I y'all, think for, I like y'all forget Triple H did the chaperone shaking my head. Uh, uh, I do not. No, okay, boy. I do not. Oh, it's a good boy. time. Michael Rappaport was in that. He I was believe. in Blade Three once. Don't you remember? <laughs> yeah, he oh. thought he thought he was going to be in Thor. <laughs> but yeah, oh. Marvel Disney is going to contract a, a pro wrestler. Yeah, no, no way to be a. a then D Wade's fucking... got Gabby Union, and uh. Triple H has. Stephanie, it's it mm. it it works. It it goes too well. I think though, if because we got if we bring it back to Sting is Paul Pierce is Sting, mm. then Dwayne Wade is the Rock because Dwayne Wade wasn't the guy to beat WCW, but he certainly helped, and then he was the guy, which yeah. is kind of mm-hmm. like which kind of like the reverse of like well they they really beat. They re- the heat really got cooking when Dwayne wasn't the guy, and he was just like deferring. Mm-hmm. But that was he didn't really defer. He was just hurt, so he couldn't do a lot of the stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he also had the title with Shaq, which could be the Rock with um, Nation. The Nation. Yeah. Could be. Could be. Um, and then we have Dirk as Rob Van Dam. He's very loyal. He was loyal to to a fault. Um, mm-hmm. so love Rob Van Dam. But still got still got his uh still got his his just due late in his, later in his career. Um, I'm waiting for Dirk to come out with the rolling papers. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the, the seal the deal and right. have yeah. uh, his wife out there like uh, Katie Forbes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, twerking on state got good guy. I still they got banned on Twitch because of of that of the uh, bedroom uh, segments that they did impacted. <laughs> it's hilarious to me. Um, so I would say that uh, Dirk being Rob Van Dam is the equivalent. So like Dirk bringing the plates in, <laughs> at, 
every game is the equivalent of Katie Forbes shaking and baking <laughs> on the Twitch. <laughs> it's, it's so good. It's like, oh, yeah, no, he's really good at what he does. Also, his his wife does really good stuff, too. Dirk? His wife's a queen. <laughs> wife's yeah. A queen. Uh, so... <laughs> Is there any other comparisons, right? So we're we're late late two thousands, early tens, basically the Paul Pierce, Pierce's career. Is there any like like Steve Nash? Whew. That's a tough one. Is there anybody that didn't that got is it Steve Nash Rikishi? Um Chris Jericho. It's gotta be someone who it's gotta be someone who was like carried the, the like the world title because Nash won uh, those MVPs. So that's that's why so I was thinking WCW title because I was thinking the first person that came to my mind was Chris Jericho. That that's and that I feel like Chris Jericho's not is close. It's along along the right lines of somebody who wasn't really relied upon, but also was like yeah somehow won two MVPs. Like I was thinking like it had to be somebody who kind of got like I want like I want to say DDP. Because okay. so so stick with me now, DDP. Mm-hmm. Early in his career, kind of you know not not the guy, clearly not the guy for DDP's case. Figured right. out, figured it out, and then became like a guy, one of the guys, but never was quite the guy. Steve Nash starts off in Dallas. He's mm-hmm. got he's he's doing all right, but. Not quite the guy that they need, so they trade, they trade him, they send him to they they send him to to Phoenix. He figures it out in Phoenix, and he becomes one of the guys in the NBA, but not quite the guy. Sure, he gets an, an MB, MVP, and yeah, he's probably a hip check away from probably winning a title. Mm, I think I've got one for this. Okay, right now I'm thinking Steve Nash. But go ahead. Steve Nash, is Steve Nash Booker T? Hmm. See, when I, you consider that hmm. the hip check is like Booker T versus Triple H at Mania in that very, very, very racially coded oh, angle. Yeah, that they ran. that's very. Ooh, that's a good one. But then, but then King Booker could be like Steve Nash on the Suns winning those undeserved. Yeah, see, I, maybe yeah, MVPs. I don't, I don't want to. So, so I don't feel like he's Booker T because it all comes back to Sting, Paul Pierce's Sting, right? So, mm-hmm. Paul Pierce being Sting it, at his height is like 1997, which is right around the time that like DDP was starting to figure things out. 98 is when he really gets to really, mm-hmm. really gets clicking, right? So. Like he got over in ninety seven, ninety eight is when he's just he's that guy and he's like he's over. Um he he has that match against I think it is DDP because DDP or so Steve Nash's back to back MVPs is DDP pulling a fucking good twenty minute match out of Goldberg at Halloween <laughs> Havoc. And the hip yeah. check is WCW going off at Halloween Havoc going off air before the finish of the match. <laughs> crazy crazy and I, then the lakers run is when ddp comes in to be undertaker stalker yeah 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 <laughs> yeah i think that that and now he's kind of a coach where he's got his ddp he's he's his ddp yoga which everybody's like oh cool that's cool and he parlays that into a job as like a producer and shit like that i mean he parlays his actual like ddp yoga conveniently located seven minutes down the street from me there you go so that's um, that's him. That's him as a coach. <laughs> I guess you said you said Flair is like Larry Bird and like all the that's what you, Celtics. Look. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking like me, like I feel like I, I guess the Horseman could technically be all the old Celtics legends. Yeah. That's like like it's like oh you think you're a part of us? You're not a part of us. And Brian <laughs> Pillman is Len Bias. Oh boy. <sighs> hey. Oh god. <laughs> all right. So oh. who? Booker T, because I feel like the the five time, five so, time, five time, five time, uh, five Chris, WCW Chris champion. Oh, mm. no, I mean, he he had. Is it, it, when yeah. did he win all those titles? It, 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 two thousand, <laughs> two thousand so to like two thousand one. So it's all in a year where he was where he was like five, and then he goes and becomes like you know Booker T WWE and whatnot. So, mm. hmm. 
I don't think he's Chris Bosh. Because no. Chris, ba- Chris Bosh is really was really good by himself and then became a better uh, – he fit himself. He be- took a smaller role in a bigger machine. So I feel like – Chris Bosh or Kishi? Mm, no. I'll, you know what? Chris Bosh is Kurt Angle. I was trying to figure out who's Kurt Angle. That's what I was right? trying to Right, so Kurt about. Angle, Olympic gold medalist, Chris Bosh, NBA All-Star with, as the guy for the Raptors. Mm. Goes to WWE, mm. plays a smaller part than he was playing before, and just excels. But then you got to take in the, uh, the impact run. Yeah. In consideration. Yeah. Is, Her- is, Kurt, is Kurt, Kurt Angle Carmelo? Ooh, actually, that might be. Does, Carme- does Carmelo Ooh. not have enough? Car, you know no, what? I, mm, I was going to say Carmelo. He's got all the medals. That's would, the only thing I'm thinking it's about. It's very interesting. Like yeah. Carmelo, Carmelo is also somebody that like, Pierce gets compared to a lot. Like in the same yeah. vein, like Kobe would. It's like, I guess the tier goes Kobe, Carmelo, Paul Pierce. Yeah. Oh. So, like, who who's. Okay. So. Carmelo's got to be somebody who's like held on. Is Carmelo the big show? Where? <laughs> um, is Carmelo the big show? You can. Carmelo he, have enough heel and heel and face turns like all. I, that's what I'm like kind of thinking. He did like if there's anybody who's gone from being well liked to hated a lot, like Carmelo, Carmelo. has. Right, like, thrown Carmelo. on the scrap heap, like the traded to the Hawks and then bought out and then brought back. And then, you know, bought out or, you know, fucking up and cut from the Rockets and then back to playing a bench role with the Blazers. Yeah, mm-hmm. that might be right. That it might be the big show. Yeah. I think I think that might be it. Um, okay, so who so, is Kurt Angle? So Kurt Angle, I, I feel like Chris Bosh is Kurt Angle, right? Because in the, in the grand scope of things, like, but it's not because, like, it'd have to, it would have to, oh. I'm trying to think of, like, is it Derrick Rose from that era? Is nah. it, uh, is it Derrick Rose? Bra- because hold on, stay with me now, right? Young gun rookie holds his own in that in that era. Derrick Rose blowing out his knee equals Kurt Angle getting addicted to Percocets and going to t- TNA, right? <laughs> okay. Where his TNA I'm run, listening. right? He's Derrick Rose has played a lot more basketball. Also, Derrick Rose, bad guy, like. Just bad yes. guy. Don't, Der- yes. Real bad yes. guy. Real, Der- real bad Derek guy. Rose has a lot of good basketball before his before his blown knee, and then a lot of okay basketball, okay average to slightly above average basketball for, for a lot more years of it, mm-hmm. and is concerned about like his phys- his physical well being um, post career because he wants to walk with you know walk his kid to graduation. Because you apparently, as a parent, can walk with that. I don't know. Anyways, um, <laughs> Kurt Angle, a lot of good years. Yeah, you know, he had like, you know, four or five with WWE, like ninety-five to. The, so that's wait ninety-nine to. But, but as, as far as these yeah. timelines all relate, because this is all related back to Paul Pierce. Yes. So Did the timelines mm-hmm. work out. So Derek Rose, not really. Because Derek, so if we're doing that Sting and his impact run is Brooklyn, uh, maybe, kind of. You know what? It, it works. It works. It works. It's not as is not as good as some of the other ones, but it's there. Um. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm content with that right now. So who is Brock Lesnar? Because I feel like that's one that that Kawhi. I feel like. Kind of gets I, overlooked I like, as far as those early years, those early two thousand years. Like Brock has quietly been doing this for like twenty years now. Yeah, um, it's also like I guess by the time Brock started was when like Sting wasn't wrestling. Yeah, because he was waiting for his WCW contract to run out. Is it Steph? Then like that's a good that's a good one. Right, like where an impact and Brock, Brock comes in and is the next big thing, then leaves and then come, you got to consider someone else who leaves. And comes back and leaves and comes back. Yeah, it's over and over and over. It's, it might be, you know what? It might be Kawhi then. I kind of want to go back to my Kawhi yeah. thing, right? Like comes in after, after like mm-hmm. the peak of Sting, you know, or, or Sting's, you know, kind of taking some time off. Kawhi comes I guess in. That makes. 
I guess that makes Steph John Cena. <laughs> yeah, 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 pro- yeah. I think that's 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 the one. Yeah, Roman Reigns. Kind of kind of lame. Kind of <laughs> lame. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> you, you, always, you always appreciate this place, but like deep down, you know they're kind of kind of corny. One of the greatest yeah. to ever do it. Just sometimes, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, who's, so who's who's Randall? Hmm. So Randall Keith. Randall Keith Orton. Damn, this turned into a this this wrestling podcast turned into real basketball hours, and I love it. It's real. Yeah, this is a, real real basketball. Real, real real real, 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 real real hoopers and real shooters. Real yeah. shoopers. Both of them. Real shoopers. Because um, Randy's like quietly one of the greatest of all time, but very, very slept on, but also came in a little bit later. But is it Kevin Durant? Ties, but had the ties to Triple H. I don't think, I don't think, uh, I don't, I, I think it's Kevin Durant, right? So hear me out. Yeah. I th- no, I agree with you. On par with John Cena in terms of like accolades, on par with, yep. you know, um, uh, but was never really the guy because even when KD was the better player in Golden State, Steph was still number one. Yeah, and even in OKC, people loved Westbrook more. Yeah, like it was. It's yeah. I guess Westbrook guy. would be Batista in this case. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, uh, probably very intense. Uh, that makes Nick Collison Mark Jindrak. <laughs> All right. All right. I draw the line at Nick Collison talk. That's it. Yeah. yeah. All right. We've gone too far into real Hooper hours. It was nice while we did that. Uh, so, okay. Who's the Yeti? That's my last question. Who's all right. Yeti? So that's all right. That's what I want to talk about before we before we, before we wrap up here. Right. Okay. So, so, so Crawford here, um, by being on this podcast, by doing this, by my association with you, and thus you, the listener, listening to us, you are now an extra level. But I am one degree away. Thus, the listener is two degrees away. JTR, you're also one degree away from. No, that's crazy. From the Yeti. Mm-hmm. The very same. Like if we hang out with Crawford, we could potentially be hanging out with the Yeti, Big Ron Reese. <laughs> This mm-hmm. is true. This is – or you could at very, very least be like, I get a text message from the Yeti, and you just happen to be there. Right. And so basically, yeah, you get a text message from the Yeti if you're if you're around me. That's just how this works. It, it's – that's in, like – so like, all right, so I don't want you to go too far into it, obviously. It involves, no, no, no. But like, you know, you know Ron Reese. Yeah, so we – so we buy – trade we worked together in a in a capacity so ron reese the yete is single-handedly the largest person i've ever shaken hands with and also one of the funniest people i've ever met in my entire life that guy's a fucking riot we're big 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 ron reese fans here on the dork side like there's like, cause like I've watched WCW as an adult, so like I know, and I've known about like his involvement in some of the dorkier stuff. But also like he was one of the guys that like helped Goldberg look as impressive because Goldberg lifted his him up, and he's a Ron Reese is a large human being. Oh, he's 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 when I say the largest person I've ever met and like interacted with i it's no joke he is a legitimate six ten to seven feet tall he's a solid 300 pounds plus even today at his advanced age which is not that advanced but he's he's a massive massive guy i can't imagine anyone lifting him up no matter how big they are yeah he's a large so that's that's and we're gonna. I know. I. I do. I kind of want to bring you on, but because you do know about the Yeti, like, yeah. So, but also the idea of like, hey, you know this guy. What's that like? Also, let's just laugh at this. Like, this is. It's just. It's just cool. The small world, right? Like, who would have? Who I would have never thought. Um, Yeti. Yeah, every 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 time he every time he calls me, I I pick up the phone and hit him with a different uh, wrestling trip. Like it's. You know, Ron Cena or the Ronder Taker. I never call him the Yeti because I know that's what he wants, but I won't do it. I, won't <laughs> I won't give them. I won't give him the satisfaction of me calling him no. the Yeti. But he's a big. He always, whenever you know we're done talking, big stonks guy. Whenever we're done talking stonks, 
uh, which we usually do once a week. He always hits me with the, all right, brother, give you a call later. So good. Nothing, but nothing better than hard brother guy. Like nothing better than hearing old wrestlers like casually use brother. Like so good. Like it's so good. Like I have an uncle who who says brother, right? Like he's that's just you know the lingo like that he grew up in. A you know, hey brother, how's it going? But it's his brother. It's a soft brother. But like wrestlers put an extra stink on it. They're like brother. Yeah, it's It's a brother with Hogan in normal people. Yeah. Yeah, no, normal people, it's a brother with an A. It's a brother. Yeah. But with the wrestlers, they throw the hard R on there. And yes, they so, do. Yeah. Yeah. That, that didn't come out how I meant. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, exactly uh, that, 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 that came out exactly how you meant, though. It's, uh, <laughs> it's no, the Hogan they, influence, obviously. Right. But, Just take and it they put an in their voice, and it's brother. Yeah. That's it, when you know they tr- they truly are fond of you. They say brother they with a U know. instead of an O and it's got the umlau above it. Right? <laughs> it's like brother. <laughs> it's, it's so good. Um, all right. We spent a lot of time talking about the whole Paul Pierce's thing, which is the whole idea, right? Like that's kind of what fuck, I wanted to talk fuck about. Fuck Paul Pierce. <laughs> fuck Paul Pierce. <laughs> fuck Boston. Uh, go Sixers. Um, yeah. So we- – the yeah, I was like, I'm just gonna say my team because my team's uh, still in this. Um, uh, so, right. <laughs> <laughs> Great American Bash 1999 Sting versus Rick Steiner. Any last like thoughts on Sting being bludgeoned to death by German Shepherds and a thick ass Rockwell? <laughs> I mean, I. What happened? Like we didn't see the aftermath. Like they have to stitch them up. Like you know, I mean, it le- it left me wanting more. You know what I mean? It's like I needed to know what happened on the next episode of Nitro. Yep. I mm-hmm. guess that. I mean, that works then. Like <laughs> if that got yeah, you to I, tune into the Nitro to be like, is Sing okay? I needed. I needed the blood and gore when like Abyss murdered mm-hmm. Rob Van Dam on Impact. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, Man. You know, Crawford knows what I'm yeah. talking about. Yep. A bit, like it, dude. Like it's wow. like they were beating up all the ECW guys, and the show just ends with like Abyss with a bat full of nails or whatever, and then Rob Van Dam's just like a bloody heap. I'm like, they let this on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Spike uh, TV, rest in peace. Spike <laughs> TV was the real deal. Spike TV did not fuck around. They they knew what they were going for. And they <laughs> let uh, they let. Total nonstop action, impact wrestling, do whatever the fuck they wanted to do. Yeah, after two hours of impact, you were either getting a thousand ways to die or <laughs> Oh yeah. They were set they were setting it up. They were Deadliest like, okay, warrior. Shit. Okay. Yeah. They were like, All right, you see this this guy about to get beaten to death with a bat. All right, now we're gonna show you why this guy got ran over by a moped because he was putting pieces in his car the wrong way. <laughs> on a thousand ways to die. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's uh, God, and it's like, and the thing is, like, I uh, like I'm sitting here thinking about that match, the uh, the the Scott, uh, the Rick Steiner. I want to say Scott Steiner because uh, who the fuck ever talks about Rick Steiner? A lot of Rick Steiner talking yeah. uh, to start the dark side, um, but the like the one thing that I noticed more than anything was that like. <laughs> The cuts are so bad. It's very yep. clearly, but like I, my image, I completely forgot that there's an there's a shot of Doug Doug Dillinger, head of WCW security. Like shoot, like he legitimately was the head of security. That guy traveled with them all the time. He coordinated with um, like local police to get like some people if they needed like a police angle shot. Um, he's fed, um, <laughs> but he's just sprinting down as fast as his like. He, and he's got massive grays. This man has to be in his like late forties, early fifties, and he's just sprinting with a with an army of yellow shirt security to save Sting. Oh, yeah, he was he was running with a bunch of ushers. <laughs> he was like, "All right, you guys, uh, fuck where these people are seated. Come with me. <laughs> yeah. You gotta stop. We've got to save. We have to save Sting. Come on, it's our time. <laughs> Do you want to be on TV or not? <laughs> like, oh well, yeah, I'll be on TV. Sure." <laughs> There's one guy. It's like, it's like the guy, the good guy with a gun. It's a good guy with a dog. Where's the guy with? Where's the good guy with a dog to stop the bad men with the dogs? You know, Doug yeah, Dillinger. Where's Airbud? <laughs> we don't have Airbud on retainer. Where's Ace the Wonderhound? Where the fuck is he? You know, 
Where's uh, where's was, underdog? Was he where's McGruff at? You know, we need to get to the bottom. <laughs> we need, we need to get to the bottom. <laughs> hey, look, if I'm WCW, that's what I'm doing. I'm calling the McGruff people. Be like, hey, do you want to do you want to work out a promotional thing? Like, we could really use Gruff Scruff McGraw here with uh, uh, fucking. Listen, talk- I think they actually did that. That doesn't sound like it's out of the realm of possibility of what WCW has done. Ah, yeah, I was gonna say, th- thank God WWE didn't get a hold of this because when they were doing any of those broke ass Scooby Doo movies, they would have had fucking um, a guy in a Scooby Doo costume come out and say Braun Strowman, look, from fucking Lucha Lucha House Party, hey, over some bullshit. If you're telling me I get to see Ma- Matthew Lillard on my television screen be portraying his greatest <laughs> role of Shaggy, I'm all for it. No, I'm all for that it. That wouldn't be it. But that wouldn't be it. It would be Matt Riddle, and you know it. Oh. <laughs> Dude, it would I, be Matt. It would be Matt Riddle and fucking uh, God. I can't even think of anyone to put as Scooby Doo. Scooby would be Hornswoggle. Swag, horn they bring him back. Outfit. Let's see, <laughs> Matt, R- Matt Riddle. Who's Fred? Fuck. We're now we're doing this thing. All right, who's Fred? Oh, oh boy. boy. All right. Who's is Fred? is John uh, Morrison Fred? Be... Airheaded fashion man. Might be. Might be. Daphne know. is uh Daphne is uh Dana Brooke. Okay. Dana Brooke. Velma. And then Velma. Oh, man. He's like the smartest. I don't, I don't watch quote, that unquote. Scooby-Doo to like yeah, put this I want to be like, is it, I want to be like, is it Bailey? Like, I mean, Bailey could, Bailey. Uh, Bailey would knock it out of the park for 100%. <laughs> yeah, ding, <laughs> we'd get ding dong hello drops from Velma whenever she comes hey. through. Yeah. <laughs> I'd pop in the theater. Yeah, yeah. Man, she said the line, dude. Vince, cut the check. That's two things. I get. I'm out here. Yeah, I, no, we we are on a big. We're doing this for free. Don't you understand? <laughs> right. I'm not even asking for a lot. Right. I'm just asking for a check. Give me two fifty. Yeah, like I'll take two fifty for consultation. You know. Listen, Vince, just let me back on the creative writing team. That's it. Dude, you know. Th- I know I, we saw yeah. we had our differences in '09. Can't believe that. I think I'm a I'm a more mature person. <laughs> I, I hope so. I you were you were you were like ten. <laughs> like, hey. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I hope you were a more mature person. For, can't believe you told him Hornswoggle should be his son. That's a terrible <laughs> idea on your part. Yeah, I can't believe. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's <laughs> what they get for listening to a ten year old. Kennedy, what do you want from me? That's what they get Fit for listening Finley to a ten year old. All right. <laughs> Fit Finley was right there. I was. I I just rewatched uh, Mania twenty four, and I forgot that that match. Uh, between oh, Finley and uh, JBL, which is an absolute fucking brutal match, but yeah, yeah. they beat the shit out of each other. It all started because JBL was like, "I have it on good authority that Hornswoggle is not your father, or is not your son. He's <laughs> he's Finley's, <laughs> and they've been getting you." It's like, wait, what? Oh, uh, JBL! It's another episode for another day. Yeah, oh, boy. I suppose, uh, they were definitely doing the. the here's a great thing. I get to talk tell everybody like what we're going to lit like things i'm like i'm going to talk about the jbl border angle oh like, God. like oh, there's man. so i i was telling i was talking about and they, hey, you know this is fine i this is fine for the pot we're trying to i'm trying to figure out like there's a lot of dorky stuff that is mm-hmm. funny to talk about in hindsight because in this in the same way that like laughing about like friends doing something that was like inadvertently racist is funny to talk about. Like, oh, Friends is funny to laugh at because they didn't have any representation other than white people in New York. <laughs> ha ha ha! It's like that's kind of sad to laugh at though. So there's a lot in wrestling that like is. Oh, you're talking about the TV show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've yeah. never seen. Made, I've never seen an episode of Friends. Friends. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no either. No. Yeah, no. Was, I've never seen an episode of Friends, so I'm like, uh, yeah, no. There's there's no representation at all. It's it's white people. It just it's white people the whole the show, um, so like <laughs> it's the same exactly right. It's funny to laugh at that and make jokes about that because it's like wow, look at this lack of just awareness, right? Like this show was in 1999, and that or the same way to like like whereas like in in wrestling there's like you know there was Kai and Tai who were Funaki oh. and Takamichinoku. Oh man, where Is that the whole cut, uh, what. Dal Venus's dick off. So that was the that was the original version, right? Where it's just a group, it's a group of four Japanese guys. Um, whereas, like the second iteration of it is just Takamichinoku and Funaki ta- being dubbed over, like like Japanese like movies are dubbed over. Oh 
So they would what? talk in, they would talk into an a dead mic and backstage and I found this out very recently Shane McMahon would talk into it for them. Oh gosh. So they, wow. the whole gimmick is that they don't know English and they get dubbed over like an like an uh, an, uh, like a, an American dubbing over like Godzilla, right? Mm-hmm. Where you know, which the joke is like Japanese will say that their mouth will move a lot to say the English no, or and the English would just interpret it as no, right? Like those yeah. kind of that. That's the whole punchline of it. Uh, you also have the Mexicals. Yep. yep. Right. Psychosis and uh... Hooventude and Super Crazy. Mm-hmm. They would come and out. And you have FBI. You have <laughs> FBI. Yeah, like like I'll make we'll make fun of the FBI, the full blooded Italian, all damn day, like a hundred percent. Nunzio, what a fucking! I was watching uh, ECW One Night Stand mm-hmm. in the uh, in it was in Philly, right? Uh, no, no, the One Night Stands were in uh, New York. They were at Hammerstein Ballroom. Okay, yeah, yep, Hammerstein Ballroom, right? And I was watching that, and it's FBI against Mexico, I believe. Uh, it was super, well, and, super crazy and psychosis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. And oh man, just what? Hammerstein Ballroom. That's another episode for another day. Yeah. She's giving me. Oh man. Um, so, like, there's a lot that is dorky that we could sit here and make fun of, but like, it's not. I mean, like, I'm a white guy. I'm not gonna sit here and make fun of racism. Like, I'm just not. Like, I like. No, nah, I'm good. Like, I won't be sitting. Like, I won't make fun of it. I'll denounce it. I'm not gonna be sitting here and glorifying it and be- making content off of it just because like it doesn't feel right. Mm-hmm. No, that's right. But I think at a certain point too, though, you you had the avenue to talk about it as well. Correct, correct. So it's one of those ones like, well, I can talk. We can talk about why this is, but also like, gee, the whole point of the show is also to laugh at it. So if I can figure out a way to balance that and do it right, I'll do it. But the border and the JBL border angle is a little different, and like. Like a spoiler alert for the future is basically he kicks out a bunch of Mexicans trying to quote unquote cross the border. Oh yeah, like it's one of those ones he of was, like he was also the champ at the time too. No, right? he was no Eddie Guerrero okay. was a champ. This was so that he would be oh, named okay, yep. Kurt Angle's greatest it, yep. American. It's a it's a whole mess of a it's a whole mess of a thing where like this is designed to be racist for the purpose of being like this guy is a bad guy. Boo him, and then, and then he won the title, and then he wins the title off Eddie. <laughs> like, but like, hey, yeah, man, this is going hey. to like fuck Vince McMahon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's 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 and like those are the things of like this was designed. Like, there's ones that are like, hey, wouldn't it be funny if we put three Mexicans on John Deere mowers, call them Juan Deers, and have them come out wearing them? <laughs> like. That would be funny. We're not like we're not going to sit here and be talk, but I'll make fun of something that was designed to do the exact thing that we like that we're talking about. Like this was designed to get heat. This was bad heat to get. But wow, the lengths that they go to to make this guy be a bad guy when, like, all right, that's just preposterous. Whereas, mm-hmm. you know, talk about that. Or you have one question? Yeah, for a future episode. Yeah, are you going to talk about Vince? Vince and the do rag saying that thing oh. that he said that he shouldn't have said. <laughs> he was not in a oh, do rag. No. Hold on, actually, he, he Crawford. Was... Crawford. That was two separate incidents. <laughs> yes. He oh, was... brother. Yeah. Oh, the do rag, do rag, Vince, and uh, the word Vince. Two different instances, separated by about three, two or three years. Two or three years. Yeah. And oh, losing a WrestleMania match to. A, a former, former president, president who's yeah. a piece of shit. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Re- re- wait. Re- Reagan had a. WrestleMania? No, I'm <laughs> listen. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad. I, li- you could probably find it. I think there actually might be something in like those eighties. That's probably true. It, it's probably true. It wouldn't tribute surprise me. Yeah, it would not. No. Tribute to the troops or something. No. It's but uh, Jesus Christ. But yeah, the fact that we're like, yeah, the 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 piece of shit former president. Which one? Ah, yes. American politics. Um, uh, Crawford. USA, USA, USA. <laughs> you got any last uh, last thoughts on the Steiner Sting match? No, the, I mean, that Rottweiler was big as shit. Ah, oh, fucking A. That's the biggest dog I've ever seen. Um, no, as far as that, uh, kudos to Sting for, like, showing up to work that day. Truly a testament to his ability to read the room and understand what's going on and think things are going to be okay. Uh, but other than that, no. I mean, shout out Scott Steiner and Steiner Math. Mm-hmm. Yes, and that's about it. Yeah. 
where I'm at on that match. All right. Yeah, that, that, that'll that sum it up. Scott Steiner, the Steiners, Tank Abbotson. I don't – that's so much. There's so much in that fucking match. There's, <laughs> there's so, so much. much going on there. <laughs> um, All right. So, before we go, JTR, I do – my 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 rule is youth before beauty. Oh, boy. Plug your <laughs> shit. Let the people know where they can find you. If they enjoyed uh, enjoyed your your appearance here. Um, I don't really – do social media enough to know what my actual handle is. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at El Jefe Jacobe. That's E L J E F E A A K O B E. Um, I don't really tweet much. I might like your tweets here and there. I just, I just have it for like when the music's dropping, when wrestling happens, and I don't know. Maybe I'll be more active on it. We'll see. All right, all right, Crawford. My friend. Uh, you can follow me on pretty much all socials at C R V W F O R D, the same as it is in the Discord. If you're in the Discord where us three became close personal mm-hmm. friends. Uh yeah, I don't tweet much either. I do a lot of tweet liking, occasional retweeting, but who knows? Um, maybe I'll get back to it. Who knows? We'll Just see, see see what the people want. Yeah, we we mind our own business. We try to keep it low key, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm just stuff. I'm just here to watch. I'm not here to participate. Yeah, yeah. You know, I like to know the jokes, but I don't want to be the joke. Smart. That's very okay. smart. Uh, thank you guys for coming on. I'm we're we're gonna do this again when I have another uh, NBA to uh, to wrestling uh, uh, comparison. I'm sure I'll I'll find another one. I'm just very happy. A lot of those hit very well. There is nobody. There is nobody who compares as well as Sting and Paul Pierce. Both of them overrated, overhyped. So delicious. And, it is so delicious. And, you know, they, they think shitty they're shit. Fans. Don't st- shitty fans. <laughs> yeah, shitty, shitty fans. fans. Shitty fans. Listen, listen, please, Boston Sports fans, just, just get your act together, please, for your own sake. <laughs> you don't need to throw a water bottle at Kyrie. Like, come on. Like. Showing your whole ass. You don't need to say that. You're, you don't need to say, say you're, that. You're proving a point about yourself's right. Mm-hmm. That's just that. It's like I said. Oh, don't don't say racist things. And it's like I we're not mad. He's like, bro, shut up. Just shut the fuck up, please. Just <laughs> please. Once in your life, Boston sports fans. Yeah. Wait a second. Hold on. I just thought about this. Was that Roman Reigns? Was that Roman Reigns' first appearance in wrestling in 1999? The Big Dog. Hey, How did I go the whole nah, podcast? How did I go the whole is. podcast without there fucking coming up? Bang! It all comes full comes circle. circle. Bang, it baby! Full circle. That's right. Take <laughs> close out. All right. Thank you guys. Appreciate you guys coming on. I uh, look forward to the next time. Thank you again to JTR and Crawford for coming on, my close personal friends. Thank you so much for for being here uh, and, and and just shooting the shit about why Paul Pierce and Sting, the both of them, are you know. Overrated, uh, amongst other topics. Appreciate that, guys. A lot of fun. I hope you, as a viewer, enjoyed. They'll be back in some capacity. I love bringing, love the idea of bringing back uh, guests to, you know, talk about different topics with different people. You know, change it up, shake it up a little bit, uh, because it's a lot of fun. Um, uh, you know, they're not the first ones on. Now it's Gerp and Panda Pete, uh, but they can be. They, they hold the title among the CPFs that they're the first ones on officially uh and uh i'm sure that'll ruffle ruffle some feathers in some good light-hearted uh joshing some good old joshing you know a bunch of jokesters i uh, appreciate it guys thank you so much to you the viewer thank you for listening once more uh and subscribing and listening and if you haven't already please 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 leave a review on your on this on your podcast platform rate review remember i read the five star reviews uh, in a Dusty Rhodes or a Macho Man voice. So, baby, let me tell you them Dusty Rhodes here telling you, baby, you leave that little five-star review. Get your little meltha on and give me a five-star, and I'll read it. Uh-huh, yeah, and also I'll read it. Yeah, Macho Man, uh-huh, yeah. So, yeah, exactly. There you go, a little bit of preview there. Thank you so much again. Uh, also, follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram at Dorkside Ring on the both of them. You can follow me individually at I am Grum on Twitter and on Instagram. Also, if you haven't already and you would like to consume more of my content, twitch.tv slash tgrum or grum.tv, and it'll take you right there. 
I appreciate that. Um, that's it. That's all we got next week. We got another good one. More CPFs to come on. We're going to be talking about the King of the Road match from Uncensored 1995. That's a, oh boy, that's a, <laughs> that's a match. That's also a fun conversation because that's all we have here on Dork Side of the Ring is we have fun conversations with fun people. Because wrestling is more fun when no one's taking it seriously. I am Grum. I will see you all next week. Thank you so much. Be good to yourselves. Be nice to the people around you. Do something kind for some strangers. And I will see you all next week here when you visit me on the dork side of the ring. <laughs>